Hey everybody, I am Kevin Ioli from Yahoo Sports and my next guest is one of the big stars of UFC 250. Yeah, not in the main event, not even in the co-main event, but the guy that everybody is talking about on this show is that guy right there, Mr. Sugar Sean O'Malley. How are you, Sean? Doing f***ing awesome. How are you? I am doing great too and I can't wait till Saturday night. Uh, what has this been like for you? You know, you're finally active again, right? This is your second fight in uh, what, three months, a little bit less than three months after that long period of time. It, you know, it, it, has it been uh, refreshing finally to be able to get back in there and be in the gym all the time and have something to work toward? Yeah, I was never not in the gym all the time. So, but it is nice to have something, you know, like a little uh, end date kind of thing. So it is nice having fights booked and being like having something to focus on, but um yeah it feels f***ing, it feels like we're right on track we're back back to where we left off and it feels good your uh, your performance the last time out uh, at ufc 248 was, was phenomenal and and there was some questions about how are you going to do like when you break it down when you went home and looked at it you know would you give it a thumbs up thumbs down how do you how do you look? yeah it's hard to it was i was like that after the fight just because i two years for two minutes it was just like I want to keep fighting. That's what I I do. But I can't complain about the the, the finish. the The performance was pretty much flawless. I got to go out there and show that I'm I'm a re I'm not just a a fake hype train. I'm a real hype train. So that was nice to be able to kind of prove that. And I think the high the high level people of the sports that get the game they're they're like oh shit this is kids for real. Right. You know some fans still be like yeah but he hasn't fought anybody. Um, which they're not, they're not wrong. I mean, Jose was super tough, so I, he was not really a nobody, but, um, I, I, I still get to go out there and prove to a lot of people that I'm for real. You know, the one thing, like as a young fighter, there's a certain development curve you want to put a fighter on, you know, you don't want to put them in too fast against guys that are way more developed than they are because you might ruin the development, but also, you know, you're a competitive guy and you want to get in there. So you're going up against Eddie Wineland now, but you're already getting the guys, you know, Brian Kelleher, who's, who's on the same card uh, is calling you, uh, calling you out, wanting to fight you and all this kind of stuff. Is there a danger that they can move you too quickly? I'm on a I'm on a different level than Brian Keller. I'm up here, he's down here. So we'll get um there, there there's not my skill levels you can't compare my skill level to his. It's just not accurate. Um so when he calls me out, it's like I'm going down. I I'm trying to go up. I think Eddie's a perfect next step to go up and then we'll we'll continue to go up. If he goes out there and beats Cody Stamen, um yeah, there's that's for sure a potential fight. Um so we'll see. But I've also been called out by, I think, nine people. When I was out for those two years, I got called out by nine people. So Brian's just the one that keeps chirping, keeps chirping. But sometimes you got to be careful what you wish for. And if it happens, I'm, I'm gladly, you know, to go knock him out. But I'm definitely looking for, you know, bigger names and, and better people. You know, Wyland's certainly been in there with a lot of great guys. Uh, Uriah Faber, a Hall of Famer, uh, Ronnie Yaya, you know, Joseph Benavides who's going to fight for the title. Uh, you know, Henan Barral, former champion. Um, what is fighting a guy with that kind of experience? I know you spar with those kind of guys, but in the cage, like what is the difference when you get him in the cage? And do you feel like this will be a learning experience for you? Yeah, it, every fight's going to be a learning experience. You can learn something, but I think it's going to be a learning experience for him even more that, oh, shit, there's this level. Like I've fought a lot of people, but I haven't fought someone with this high level of a skill set when it comes to, when it comes to striking. My ground game is extremely high level, but I don't think it's not, you know, I've, I've rolled with extremely high level black belts. There's levels to that. I feel like I'm that level of striking. I'm extremely high level. Um, he's going to have a really tough time getting to me, have a tough time hitting me. And it's the shots that I hit him with that he's not even going to understand where it came from. Right. So I think he's going to have a, a lot. He's going to be able to learn a lot from this fight too, that there's, there's levels. You know, they always say in fighting that the shots you don't see coming are the ones that hurt you most. And, you know, you're certainly uh, an unorthodox guy and you have that ability to put everything together. I mean, you are like the true definition of a mixed martial artist, right? You know, you have a little bit of everything. Is that the secret to your success? Like if you were the exact same striker, but not as good on the ground, do you think that that would, you know, your striking wouldn't be as effective in the fights, but because you have that threat of the ground game, it makes your striking more effective? Yeah, it's nice. These last, well, that last fight, was pretty much the first fight I've ever went into a fight thinking like if it goes to the ground I'm I'm good there. Right. Um. All my other fights before that I'm like it was a little bit of a question like okay I hope 
I hope I don't get held down by someone. That was always kind of my fear. Someone take me down and hold me. Um, now I'm just so much, I'm so active off my back that if someone takes me down there, they're, they're going to be defending. I'm going to be winning off my back. And that's something I feel like um, I haven't really got a show yet much of, but it, it's still kind of a secret weapon because I, I don't think Eddie's going to go in there and try to take me down, at least not a, not for a little while until he realizes he can't hit me. Um, but other guys like like Brian or, or people that think that the only the way to beat me is take me down is just not the answer. So it, that'll be sweet when I get to go out there and show that. But, yeah, it's nice. Those last those two years really let me improve my jiu-jitsu so much to where if Eddie takes me down, I'm, I'm, I'm good. I'm, re- I'm ready to go to the ground and fight. I, I do more jujitsu than I do anything. Right after uh, you fought last when you beat uh, Quinones, uh, obviously the coronavirus pandemic started. How did that impact your training? Were you able to train normally and, and did you have all your training partners or was it impacted in some way by the virus? Honestly, I, I, I don't pay much attention to the news and what's going on. Um, my training schedule didn't really change. You know, the lab closed down for a while, but I, I go there a couple times a week. So um, we were just having those couple of practices that I usually have at the lab at Tim's gym. He owns his own gym. So we go in there and, and do what we need to do. And then I trained with Brandon Harris, who he's my strength and conditioning coach. He has his entire setup in his backyard. So I wasn't missing any practices and, and it was enjoyable. I had a good time. And uh, what about training partners? You had all your normal training partners with you so you could roll and do those kind of things? Yeah, we had guys asking, high-level guys, you know, asking us, hey, can we come train? People, like, high-level guys that have the same mindset as me, wanting to be world champs, you know, they want to, hey, how can I train? So they're hitting us up. We had, you know, it was nice. We were scheduling our own practices um, with, with really good guys. So I wasn't short of uh, training partners at all. You know, I know this This isn't a, a huge deal, but when you're fighting in a, you know, uh, empty arena, you know, I'm sure, you know, you guys have adrenaline, you know, going and it gets you fired up to hear the crowd and all that. And uh, I know you're a guy that feeds off that energy of the crowd. How do you think it's going to be fighting where it's, you know, it's more like the gym, more you know, like you're in training? I mean, is it going to be, you know, be any different or take some adjustment? No, I don't think so. I mean, we'll see. It's hard to say, but I think, you know, I, I've never not shown up for a fight. Every single fight I show up, um and and I just let go of everything once I'm in that cage nothing on the outside of the cage matters what what's going on inside the cage is the only thing that I'm thinking about so uh, it's not like when the when the arena's sold out I'm thinking like when I'm in the cage I'm not thinking about that so whether it's sold out or no one as long as Dana White's there and Joe Rogan's there I'm ready to go (laughs) <laughs> when you, you know, like when you walked to the cage last time, I mean, you know, you just put off the epitome of cool, right? Like, like, like you were enjoying and soaking in all the surroundings. Did I read that wrong? No, that's exactly what's happened. I was just, you know, those two years out, I was like, damn, that, that was an eye opening experience. Like I'm not gonna be able to fight forever. You know, it's gonna, there's gonna come a day where I'm, I can't make this walk again. So I was really just making sure to enjoy that walk and just be there and soak it all in and, and, and just experience how it feels to make that walk. So now the fact that you're, you know, you had a, a successful fight, you come back on Saturday. If you win, when do you want to fight again? When is realistic? I mean, could you come back in another month or how long would it take you? Yeah. If we get, if we get, uh, if I get out of there, just like that last fight, I'm ready to go in a couple months. You know, if, if there's an opponent out there that makes sense in two months, one month, it, it depends how, if I get out of that fight, like I did last fight, no injuries, I'm ready to go literally whenever if there's a sweet fight that next weekend two weekends i'm ready to go do you have interest in fight island yeah that's going to be legendary i think you know every single person on the roster would probably say yes so and you know the other thing i wonder about is will you call anybody out like you know you mentioned before nine different people have called you out right now i mean so it's almost like you're even though you're not a champion you're just a young guy starting your career out it's almost like you're at the top of the food chain and the fact that other people are shooting at you so does it is it counterintuitive for you to call somebody else out do you just let them call you and dana uh, dana pick well technically there's not a there's not a champ in the division right now. So there's yeah. no reason I can't call myself a champ. I feel like every single fight I go into, I'm the champ. I'm the main event. I'm what people want to watch. And there's no different this fight, except for there really is no champ. I know Peter versus Jose is getting scheduled, but neither of them are the champ right now. So yeah, I'm just going to keep that same, same mindset. I'm the champ and we'll see what happens after the fight. I don't know. We'll, we'll I guess you'll find out. Do you, do you ever, you know, and I'm sure you do this, but you know, 
do you look at Peter Yawn or do you look at all Jermaine Sterling? You got guys on this card, Sandhagen, you know, good prospects, guys that are, you know, champing at the bit to fight for the title. Uh, do, you know, do you judge yourself and where do you think you are in relation to, you know, numbers say one, two, three, four in the division right now? I've never been a fan, not a fan, but I've never really cared about the rankings. You got Jose Aldo coming off a of loss. He's ranked number six, never won the division fighting for the belt. You got Dominic Cruz hasn't fought coming up. Like, those don't I, – I, don't, I never think of the division. I don't know who's number one. I don't know who's number two. I don't know any of their rankings. Um, they're all f***ing high-level high level guys. They're all – could be they could all be champion. Every single one of those guys you just named could be champ. Um, but I feel like I could be too. I don't feel like, oh, I'm not as good as this guy. I feel like I'm just as good as any of those guys. Have you had that conversation then with Dana? Like, hey, I, I'd like to fight for the title by the end of this year. I mean, is that a realistic thing? And, you know, if Cejudo was there, it probably wouldn't have happened because he had certain guys in mind that he wanted to fight. With him out of the picture now, do you think that opens the door for you? And have you talked to Dana about it? No, I haven't talked to Dana. I'm sure Dana's got – he's he's a gangster. He's figuring out all this, the hotel. The, he's, he's got so much on his mind. I'm sure he's – you know, jacked about my fight, and, and uh, well, he, I'm sure he would love to see me be champ. I have a bigger following than all those guys put together. Like, it, it the, the people want to see me be champ, but I get to still go out there and prove that I have the skills to be champ. So, um, it, I'm in no hurry, really, to be champ. If it happens by the end of the year, happens early next year, sweet. But if not, I'm, like I said, I'm not in a really, I'm not in a hurry. I see you've done a lot of media already. You know, you were on with the the man himself, the Schmo. I mean, so that's yep. obviously a big step up to go on with the Schmo, right? So, uh, you know, the fact is it all the media you have to do by being the star you are, you know, and you're looking at maybe some of the people who are higher up on the card than you aren't uh, aren't doing that. Is it is it frustrating or is this part of the job that you like? Do you like to be out in front of the public? I like doing interviews. If it's a good, like, I like doing interviews with you. You ask good questions. You understand the sport. Um, I've definitely done interviews from people who are just – they don't – they're just not good at their job. So if, if it's someone – if doing a podcast with a Schmo, that was fun. Doing an interview with you is fun. I enjoy doing the interviews um, because the reason – not the reason I fight is because of you guys, but it, it's because I love fighting truly. But it makes it so much more enjoyable that there's people out there like you and other, you know, good good media outlets that enjoy the sport and, you know, think about this stuff all day. They watch all the fights. They watch all the interviews. They know. So I enjoy doing it. Last thing, I, I would be remiss not to ask you about about this. You know, I, I'm jealous of that, right? I mean, I wish I could. Uh, I wish I could copy that. And so, is there a significance to the color? Or is it just what you felt like doing, or is there some some secret meaning in that color? <laughs> no, that was just kind of. We actually thought about it a long time ago. I think even for my debut, we talked about, hey, we should do crazy color hair. But uh, it just never felt like it was the right time. I felt like I had to establish myself in in in, in the UFC. Um, and with everything go, I don't know. It just happened. We just it just happened. My girl does hair, and she did a really good job. She's like a high level hairstylist. So you know, it took ten ten and a half, eleven hours to to get it done. And she wow, did a good ten job. and a half hours. Holy yeah, f yeah. So she did a really good job. Made sure it wasn't gonna you know f up my hair for forever. So it it it's a quality job done. That is a serious girl. She's spending 11 hours on your hair. So you got to keep yeah. that one. Yeah. No doubt. Well, on Saturday, UFC 250, a uh, really good fight to keep an eye on. Not the main event, but a guy has a lot of interest. Sean O'Malley, Sugar Sean, fighting Eddie Wineland. You want to see that on ESPN Plus because you can't be there, unfortunately. Sean, I really appreciate it. Pay-per-view, right? What's that? It's on, I don't, it's on, it's on pay-per-view, right? It is on pay-per-view. Okay. So people yeah. can see it. They can't see it live, but they can see it on pay-per-view. They right. can't either on as Don King. If you can't see it on the scene, watch it on the screen. There you go. All right, brother. Good luck to you. I appreciate you. Thank you so much for your time. Absolutely. Thank you. Have a good one. You too. Sean O'Malley, everybody.